Hello, I'm Val Zavala, and I'm here at the California Science Center in front of a magnificent piece of history, the Space Shuttle Endeavor. You're about to see a film that will lift your spirits and put you in awe of what we here in Southern California are capable of accomplishing when we work together. You're about to see a documentary that captures the three nights and three days in LA when divisions disappeared. Why? Because all eyes were on this. overhead. It was designed to soar in outer space. It was never intended to crawl through city streets built for earthbound cars and trucks. How did we do it? What did it take? The film you're about to see captures this historic 14-mile journey, and it's an example of superb filmmaking. And with me now is one of the executive producers, David Knight. Thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure to be here. First of all, how on earth did the idea even come together to do this level of film? Because you knew there would be news crews and everybody else would be, be filming. Why did you feel this one film had to be made? That's a great question. We realized that this was a historic event, not only the bringing of the very last space shuttle to be delivered to its new home, but bringing it through the streets of one of the largest cities in the world. And we realized that we didn't just want to film it in the traditional way. So we put together an incredible film team, over 150 people who all volunteered their time, uh, incredible amounts of equipment donated by the largest companies in Hollywood and many other companies. Uh, even unions uh, just contributed their time and their people. And then in parallel, uh, there was a filming team that was working with Toyota on capturing the movement of the tundra, and we agreed that we would just start working together. Toyota really extended that so that they were able to not only uh, fill in the blanks where we weren't, but they got some of the shots in the film that just are mind-blowing. Um, you'll see a shot where the shuttle is moving past the front of a laundromat, and that was mm -hmm. captured by the Toyota team. A lot of these really touching moments. Oh, the cinematography is really, really beautiful. What were some of the biggest challenges? Was it logistic, or was it just getting everyone together, or the fact that you had to do all this in 10 weeks? Well, the time compression was really yeah. stunning. I, I have uh, never really made a movie before, by the way. This was my first what? major project. Oh. and but. Somebody had to do it, so we came together. I've been involved with the California Science Center for a long time, quite a lot of my life, actually, and I'm such a big supporter that we said, you know what, we're gonna roll up our sleeves and make a movie. We also didn't go into the uh, project with the intent of making what became Three Nights, Three Days. We were just capturing footage. We have hundreds of hours of footage uh, that comes from things like helicopters and cameras mounted on Endeavor itself and on the robot that moved it through the streets. We brought all of that together. Toyota had completely independent teams. We didn't duplicate our shots. It was highly coordinated. It was really wonderful collaboration. And in the end, we had so much footage that a leading director uh, named Paul Bozomowski took all of that footage and then edited it into the beautiful film that you're seeing here. It is gorgeous. And you're seeing again almost Everybody's services were donated, no one charged. We didn't even have a budget for coffee. So wow. we wanted this to be donated, uh, not only as a gift to the Science Center Foundation, but to the community. So yes, we had to marshal uh, things like trucks and vans and food and uh, where do people stay when they're crashed out in the middle of all this. Many people, including myself, stayed awake for almost 40 hours during parts of the move just to make sure that we got everything to happen. Well, it was beautiful, and it turned out it's just a gorgeous piece of filmmaking. So oh, thank, thank you, you so much. much. I'm really glad that everybody's going to be able to watch it tonight. Oh, and they will. And now KCT Link and the California Science Center and Toyota North America are very excited to bring you an exclusive broadcast of Three Nights and Three Days, Endeavor's Journey Through Los Angeles. It's the most sophisticated machine man has ever created. It's an amazing feat of human ingenuity. That's beautiful. Perfect. When you see it in person for the first time, it's just a magnificent thing. Stand back and for just a moment, admire and take pride in its work. The space shuttle has flown its last flight, but we really see it now as starting its next mission. We know that in America there is a crisis in science learning. Just think of having that in your classroom. It has such presence and such gravitas. 
The California Science Center will be the new home of the shuttle Endeavour. This is the first and only time a shuttle is going to be moved through an urban street. We will have the eyes of the world on us. We can't miss anything. The pressure's mounting. The anxiety is starting to build. This is a real honor. Can we make it happen? We're all involved in a project that's carrying a national treasure. Off for the final launch of Endeavour. The Space Shuttle Endeavour still is the most amazing flying machine ever created by human beings. From a crew member's perspective, uh, having a chance to actually be one of the people that operated that space shuttle, absolutely magnificent. The space shuttle spreads its wings one final time. Challenger we lost in uh, 1986. It was a very tragic event. And in 87, Congress authorized the replacement for that, which was the Endeavour. The engineers felt that Endeavour would be probably the most pristinely assembled orbiter ever. This first flight in May of 1992. It's a unique vehicle. It's, uh done things that no other vehicle has done. It's had so many terrific achievements. It could do so much. It can carry people back and forth to low Earth orbit. It has a gigantic payload base, so it can carry up large satellites. You know, when you think that we have a continuously inhabited space station whirling around the Earth, this is what made it possible. Some pretty impressive pedigree with that orbiter. Hubble Telescope's first repair. No big time stuff. 122 million miles flown during 25 challenging space flights. For the last time, the space shuttle's main engines have fallen silent as the shuttle slips into the final chapter of a storied adventure. Here we are retiring something, the space shuttle program, that no other country has even come close to building. Four years ago, NASA announced that they were retiring the space shuttles and would have a competition for who would acquire the shuttles. I was thinking in terms of what it would be for the Science Center, and as an educator, what I could do with this thing. Think of having that in your classroom. The mission of the California Science Center is to inspire curiosity and science learning for everyone. We mean everyone, and particularly those that are traditionally underrepresented. We submitted a proposal focused exclusively on the education and the content and how we thought we could motivate kids with it. NASA had over 20 submissions from institutions across the country. We were not considered a favorite. Fast forward a couple of years, I'm there at the phone, General Bolden called. The California Science Center in Los Angeles will be the new home of the shuttle on the launch pad preparing its final mission, Endeavour. He said, well, I got some great news for the California Science, and I almost fell off the chair when he said it. It's an incredible honor to have something that is so valuable and so rare. The next day, NASA said, be in Florida next week. We need to start understanding how you're going to get this from the airport to the Science Center. A couple of the NASA guys leaned over to me and said, you know, there's a 50-50 probability we think you're not going to be able to pull this off. flown in on its specially modified 747, and it's going to land at Los Angeles Airport and then maneuver through the streets of Los Angeles to the Science Center, where it's going to live for the rest of its life. When 
had arrived, I looked and I said, oh my, we got something really important going on here. And we were about to perform on the world's grand stage. Job well done, America. Then we have this massive undertaking to somehow transport this vehicle, which was never designed to go by road, <laughs> from LAX here to the California Science Center. Everything is looking fantastic. As the program director, Endeavor was in my charge from the time NASA delivered it to LAX. Our job was to move in a manner that keeps it safe and sound. Obviously, this is not something you could rehearse. This is the first and only time a shuttle is going to be moved through an urban street. It's never been done before. There's no playbook. It's a very big thing we're moving. The shuttle is 122 feet long. It's 78 feet wingtip to wingtip, and it's about 57 feet tall at the tail. And that's a pretty big thing to move through the city. We couldn't go under any bridges. We couldn't go through most streets. My part of the job was to understand where the obstacles were and how to maneuver through those areas. Initially, we went through the route. I go, these people, they're out of their mind. <laughs> how are we gonna deal with this tree? You know, what are we gonna do about this transmission line? What about these signal lines? Can we miss this light pole? It's a, a tremendous engineering feat to clear a pathway through the city. We're moving utility wires. We're moving street lights. We're moving things throughout the city to make way for this. The Science Center requested absolutely we do not want a branch or a leaf to touch it. The Science Center is of the community. We're being very cautious to conserve all the trees that we can, and we're putting in more than two trees for every one removed. We were transporting a national treasure, and we didn't want to do anything that could place it at risk. She's very fragile in uh, being handled. She's good at the things she was designed for, but we had to be very careful that we didn't stress it in unusual ways. The whole outer surface of the shuttle, the thermal protection system, is quite fragile. They say that a fingernail can actually break one of the tiles. We could not move this through the city of Los Angeles the way the orbiters were moved in the past. So we looked at some very unique state-of-the-art equipment. They're called self-propelled modular transporters. The SBMTs are remarkable pieces of equipment. The steering on it is such that they can make it so that it can go in a beautiful arc. They can make it so it crafts. They can make it so it spins in its own length. The driver of the vehicle has a remote joystick that he's controlling the equipment with, and he can be anywhere he needs to be and make sure we're just going to maneuver right past the obstacle. We can literally go down to inches. Here's what we need, 80 feet. We have 80 feet. We can make it. It really started when uh, NASA lifted the orbiter Endeavour off of the 747 and put it on our system. Coming out of the hangar at LAX, right? Here we go. This is real. We're leaving the safe haven of the hangar and going out into the unknown. When you look down on the streets of Los Angeles, the first thing that runs in your mind is like, this does not belong here. We knew going into this that it had never been done. That space shuttle had never been put on these transporters. And so it was all a proof of concept in real time. It was like a weld oil machine. They always had radio communications. You have a foot, you have six inches. You have a quarter an inch, you know. I know that their heart in their chest was thumping pretty hard. There were a few areas where, where even I was holding my breath. It was very close. They actually tilted Endeavor several times. 
uh, just slightly, but just enough to give us another inch and slip through. We're bringing this historic space shuttle through the neighborhoods, and people were lined up 30, 40 deep. It's a great experience to bring this whole community together. The fact that you have thousands of people lying the streets through this whole 12 mile process is amazing, and all the different neighbors it's going through. Incredible crowds. We've heard that it might have been a million people on Crenshaw alone. Did I expect that many people to witness it? No. People from all walks of life, all races, all creeds, all here to see the shuttle. I think that there was this sense that the streets couldn't hold that many people, but the streets can hold that many people, and I think it showed what the city of Los Angeles can do and how people can come together. I'm so glad to see it come through here because everything normally go around us or over us. It don't exactly come through here. They had the space shuttle coming down their streets and in their neighborhoods. No one will ever be able to top that. And these are some very hard hit, depressed neighborhoods. This is my opportunity to see it up close to personal, not shooting up in the air, but driving down the street. <laughs> Cruising on Crenshaw. <laughs> it was amazing to see it in this neighborhood that I'm in all the time. Kids are on the rooftops, people I know are saying, hey Ken, you know, it's cool. To know that we had that many people on the streets and not a single negative thing, only people inspired and kids saying they want to be scientists, kids saying they want to be astronauts. It, it was really incredible. It's happening right here, right down the street from my house. I feel extremely lucky, and it's something I'm going to remember for the rest of my life. Coming through Crenshaw, you know, this part of Los Angeles, and just 20 years ago experiencing what we experienced with the LA riots, you know, sort of a turnover to a new era. It could have been any number of ways that the community could have made this difficult, but they didn't. On Crenshaw Drive, we came to a, a, what we knew was the tightest spot in the route. There's this one beautiful tree on the corner that was in the way. We tried all kinds of little maneuverings. The more we got over away from it, the closer our wing was getting to the building there. I mean, the wings were over people's lawns. I mean, I'm thinking, how are we going to do this? I had no idea how they were going to pull it off. The outside rear tire was all the way against the curb on the street, and the wingtip still uh, was not going to clear by a few inches. And the crew that sort of huddled up said, so what are we going to do? There was different alternatives. We were seriously contemplating that tree might have to come down, because otherwise we're going to be stuck there. and they came up with an absolutely elegant solution. What they did is they raised the rear wheels. They backed up and they came around again, so they were that much closer to the outside. And we were able to maneuver around it without having to touch the tree at all. There was no let up. Once you pass one object, you know, 500 more to go. Right. <laughs> They've mapped out a route that follows Manchester up to the overcrossing. 
That's the weakest link on the whole trip. That's the one bridge that has to be crossed. That bridge was structurally designed for certain loads. We could not take the SPMTs across there. Caltrans has very strict requirements. They don't like SPMTs because they're heavier. Sometimes they're not very forgiving on allowing exceptions, regardless of what the payload is you're carrying. They wouldn't let us cross the bridge. Caltrans said, you got to use this dolly. I didn't like the design of that dolly at all. It was too narrow a wheelbase. We're transferring the space shuttle from its heavy haul unit onto a lightweight dolly system. And then we're going to use a Toyota Tundra to tow the Endeavor across the overpass. Toyota has been a longtime partner of the California Science Center. They work with us throughout the process to see how they could be helpful. They partner with us to provide a vehicle. Get back and down on your right. And all indications were that the vehicle could actually do this. Back the Tundra in. We were ready. We were set to go. I was concerned because you're handling the vehicle. And anytime you handle an artifact, it's not without risk. What an L.A. moment. Randy's Donuts, the SWAT team, the shuttle. There were thousands of people gathered around waiting for this amazing moment. This is game time. And your heart is just pounding because you know that this is it. And then when they said go, The shuttle's moving, and, and we start coming up to speed. Ken was walking and pacing the truck. I was monitoring the steering. And then you hear the crowd. drove straight across. It's just amazing when it finally works. You know, you just go, wow, you know, we actually did that. People cheered. It was this incredible community experience. Everybody was just glad to be there and to be part of it. Three nights, three days, over a million people on the streets. A huge impact on our community. All the way to the end, just thousands and thousands and thousands of people. It's something that's going to go down to history and be remembered for a long, long time. It was really, truly a once event when the entire city was completely in the moment. It's been a, just a fantastic experience. It's probably one of the most humbling experiences I've ever had in my entire life. The people, they took care of it as it came through the city. They took care of us. 
They said, hey, this is it. This is ours. Don't, don't mess with it, you know. And they got us through. Just remembering all the people in the community, how it brought everybody together. I wish I could just take this thing all the way across the country. Thank you. This is fabulous, man. Right. 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 down the shop. I think it's wonderful that Los Angeles got to be a home for one of the space shuttles because it will create so many opportunities for so many people to see these magnificent vehicles and really learn from them. When we saw that the Endeavor was coming through LA, we definitely had to be a part of that and make sure that he got to see one up close and personal. This is not the final mission of Space Shuttle Endeavor. The final mission of Space Shuttle Endeavor is to inspire 100 million kids. There's something about a real object, something that really went into space 25 times that reaches deep inside our human spirit. For us, with our mission being to inspire the next generation of explorers, can't think of anything that could have more of an impact. I think this is a great thing for a science. I see little kids' eyes lighting up. Some kids sitting on a curve, they go, how's that work? That's what it's all about. For like young students and minority students of color, like for the first time they get to see something that's been in space and they could understand the magnitude and importance of math and science and education. Hopefully one day they too will have the opportunity to go to space. People somehow trusted us as an institution to pull this off. And now the Science Center can say to parents, when it comes to the science education part of what you do, we have your back on that. Everybody can achieve their goals if you just put your mind on it. It's about opening up the, the human mind, letting kids dream about their future and about the future of the world and see that they could really be a part of that.